able to help uh, cart it back to Cincinnati in my truck and a couple of pieces. And once we got the pieces back here and uh, opened them up and prepared out the bones here, the fossil was preserved in the soft chalk uh, limestone, the Niagara chalk. So it wasn't that difficult to get it out of the matrix. It's fairly soft rock. But the whole thing was flattened completely when it was found. And it wasn't nicely laid out. It was kind of curled up, as you can actually see a little bit in the picture of the way it looked. And, you know, if they hadn't found that when they did, you know, probably a flash flood or a storm would have destroyed the fossil in, you know, a short number of years. Uh, it was close to the surface. Um, later on, working in Kansas, I found another Mosasaur skeleton myself. Wow. And it wasn't as complete or as big as this, but it was subsequently excavated by a collector in Kansas. And it eventually was acquired by a museum center. And when you get down there to tour the Geyer Center, you can see that specimen. Um, it's a different species than this. It's not as big, it's not quite as complete, but, but it's kind of kind of neat thing that we were able to get that one here too. And you know, I just found this by anybody, if you're in the right place and you know what fossil bone looks like, well, you know when you're you're stepping on it. So so I found a specimen, you know, right weathering out near the surface, and similarly it was it was dug out and, and prepared. Well, eventually all the bones were uh, prepared out free of the rock and it was taken back up to Madison, Wisconsin and there a group of guys who had done the collection and preparation of other specimens uh, worked on uh, mounting it like this and they made the metal supports for it and had it in pieces they actually had to cast the flippers, the four fins or flippers and then the, about the last meter or so of the tail. Those parts were completely missing from our fossil. So the animal was complete. The skull was there, the backbones, the ribs, everything, but not the, the flippers. Uh, I, whether they had they eroded away or whether they had, had separated from the carcass of the creature, we don't know for sure. But um, they were able to copy those from a specimen of the same species and a similar size just by making casts. So, so this guy is, is authentic, it's, it's, authentic. It's, it's, it's real fossil with the exception of the, the flippers and the last part of the tail. But it was all put back together in sections and then they brought it down here and it was, uh, it was uh, uh, lifted up to the the ceiling by a very precarious process. I hate to ever have to take it down. Most of the floor, they settled the parts underneath the beam, and then they, they uh, drew it up on, uh, you know, with, with lines, and then it was transferred to the wire, to the wire cables up there. One of my colleagues, Barry Maynard, drilled the holes for the eyeballs in the ceiling. So, so uh, that's how we got her up there. Her, I don't know, him or her. Ian Herrien liked to call this specimen Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that was interesting too was some shark teeth were found in with the bones. A few shark teeth. It's probable that you know the carcass was scavenged by sharks on the sea bottom. But uh, uh, you know these things can still be found. This was found in you know, 1990 and dug out and brought back. And, they're still there in the Kansas chalks. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, it's a neat specimen. One, one of the things, I want to show you a couple of things with it. Um, there's um, evidence of uh, bone, let's see if my pointer works here. Let me see if I get the right place. There's a pair of vertebrae that are fused together. I think that's a pair. They're actually grown grown together, not just stuck from fossilization. Um, over a year ago, we had a, a special guest, uh, Bruce Rothschild, who studies uh, 
fossil uh, bones for evidence of disease and uh, pathology, studies paleopathology. And he has studied fossil mosasaurs a lot. And he'll take a specimen and uh, cut right through the bone to look for internal uh, evidence of disease. Uh, of course, that sort of spoils your specimen. So we weren't, we weren't going to let him do that. But he has found this, and uh, he got up on a ladder and looked at our specimen, and basically said, yeah, it was a fused. He had some long name for it, and uh, it's a, a fused, I don't remember the terminology, but it was basically a fused uh, pair of bones, and you can guess that that might have been pretty painful. It might have started from an injury, you know, it was a healed um, uh, baby. <coughs> If you go by the way current lizards get injured yeah. in, as they heal themselves, yeah. their bones fuse. Yeah. If you're going by current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does rely a lot on what you see in living vertebrates. One of the things that he found when he sectioned other mosasaur bones was evidence of uh, uh, damage, internal damage in their bones that's just like bone disease that you see in in um, well, diving, diving marine mammals like whales and, and uh, dolphins, and you also see in human uh, divers who suffer from uh, something called aseptic bone necrosis, which is a very nasty thing. It, it happens to people who have uh, been uh, diving a long, long time. Uh, usually, in you know, people who are say like commercial divers. Um, and subjected to uh, long, long exposures to uh, hyperbaric conditions, you know, diving. And over time, it'll, it'll um, progress within the bones and eventually cause internal deterioration. And uh, it's almost it seems like it's like an osteoporosis type of condition. And then it, it'll, it'll occur in the long bones and, you know, in time. Uh, people can just end up, just like with osteoporosis, you can have severe bone shattering, you know, just with very little stress. And uh, I mean, I've been a doctor for a long time, too. I don't think it happens generally to people who have been generally sort of in the category of recreational divers. Right? But, uh, but he found this in most of the sorts, which they were, you know, showed that they were diving for feeding. And, and uh, of course, they had to come up to the surface for air, but they must have made long uh, diving um, excursions to pretty great depth, um, and, and over you know, time suffered those diseases. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was, if you look at the skull, I thought it was a marvelous job that Ian did with the skull, because you can't really tell that the whole thing was really just flattened down, just all the bones. It wasn't three-dimensional. And she you know, got all those bones out. There was a little restoration done. One thing you can see is that the lower jaw of a mosasaur is in two parts. They're, they're, they've got a hinged lower jaw, which means that they can open their mouth extra wide uh, you know, to go 